Okay, so race season has officially begun down under uh, and I'm going to give you five things that I wish that I knew when I started racing. So... Okay, so number one is start off underestimating. One thing that you'll realize when you start racing is that it is harder than you maybe expected it to be. Uh, when I first started riding, I expected myself to be able to slot back into a C grade quite comfortably and I very quickly got spat out the back. This is not necessarily because my power and my strength was not bad, but because I had no idea how to race and I didn't feel comfortable. So wherever you're at, maybe consider starting a grade below or alternatively, have a chat to some of the people that you ride with in your group, see whether any of those guys are racing clubs, and then try and gauge based on your ability versus their ability where you may sit in regards to the hierarchy so that you can put yourself in a suitable grade because nothing is more deflating than being spat out the back of your first race. When I first came back to it, that's what happened to me, and I didn't race again for about six to eight months. So, yeah, definitely underestimate or have those conversations with your buddies. Oh. Okay, number two is a common one and it happens a lot when people first start racing because they've been in a bunch and they're, you know, pretty good at their local chop. Maybe they're doing a 50 kilometer, let's say a waterfall return with a bunch. Problem is you tend to ride with cyclists that are at the same level as you. And you get into this and you think, you know what, I'm cutting sick in my local group ride. I'm going off the front in my first race. And what you underestimate is the amount of matches that you have to burn. So the matches burning, this is a metaphor for how many goes you have before your tank is dead. A good cyclist has many matches in their kit. A cyclist that only does bunch rides is not used to those sort of uh, intervals, those high intensity efforts. And so as a result, they just don't have the matches and you'll see the group just let them dangle off the front. They'll pull them back eventually. You end up just getting spat out the other side, out the back of the bunch instead of out the front. And you just look like a bit of a twat. So honestly, if you're starting out, this is your first race, just sit middle of the pack, suss it out, accept the fact that maybe this isn't going to be the most exciting race for you, but this is just a feeler. Put the ego down, suppress that bad boy, and just hang in, see what happens. And then if at the end, you're coming into the sprint and you think, you know what, I practice to sprint every weekend, hey, have a crack. But until then, chill, buddy. You're going to be thankful for it. Okay. So number three is something that honestly I still have to tell myself. So don't worry if you start feeling like this a couple of laps in. But basically what hits me at the start of a crit is the, I don't think I can hang with this bunch. My advice to you is hang on. Skin and nails or whatever the metaphor is, I don't know, just hold on. Please, like that kitty in the poster, you know, the one that's just hanging in there, do it. Because crits ebb and flow. And the beginning generally sees people testing out the bunch, seeing what the other riders are like. And so the intensity tends to be a little bit higher. There may be some people that have in mind the intention of getting a bit of a break going. So as a result, you're constantly getting hit at the start of a crit and you'll have a look at people's power data that does crits and at the start it's up and down these sort of 40 20 almost kind of efforts because the bunch surges slows surges slows and i promise you that if you can hang in there this slows down know that if you're on the edge and you're feeling the pinch the other people in the crit are probably feeling the pinch as well and you can take heart in that have a look at your fellow riders see if they're sort of wobbling a little bit heads are starting to go down and try and gauge that but also just know that if you're suffering others are also and all things shall pass no crit maintains that high intensity the entire time sit back Hang on, if you're right at the very back, at least you're not spat out of the back. Just do your best to hold on as long as you can because once you lose that group, you're gone. There's no coming back from there. Hang on. Oi, oi. So at this point, you might be thinking, hang on a second, who the fuck's this guy, especially if you're new to the channel? So I, I'm 
fucking nobody. So go subscribe, you know? Um, but seriously, I'm genuinely nobody. I started racing at about 23. Um, I fell away from it because I started dating a girl who didn't really rate cycling, but in fairness, she was pretty hot. So, you know, what? fair pay. Um, I then came back to cycling, had twin girls this year, and I'm just back to it because they're finally sleeping normally again. So I am not anything above a B-grade cyclist. I'm pretty average, to be honest, but I have started cycling three times, and I reckon that puts me in a pretty unique position. I am up there with a very small percentage of people that have given up and come back to bike racing thrice. So I reckon that qualifies me to tell you five things that I reckon you probably want to know. And if you don't agree, tell me to get stuffed in the comments. I'll probably laugh at you. Okay, so number four is look out, mate, because Crits are pretty, pretty intense, all right? They're, they're kind of crash prone. Um, that does not mean that you will have a crash doing a crit. And I genuinely believe that crit racing is safer than road racing because you don't get your average punter showing up to a crit race. You're racing with people that have a relatively good bike skill. Even when you're racing C grade, these guys are pretty confident on their bikes. They're, they're good cyclists. Let's face it, the vast majority of cyclists don't race. The vast majority of cyclists do casual cruises out to Bondi, get a coffee, and then return. You are, the moment you walk into a crit race, part of a very small portion of cyclists that are good cyclists. But that being said, crits are fast, they're intense and you need to be paying attention. All of those hand signals that you've picked up on your bunch rides, make sure you are using them. Put your hand out to signal that you're going for a water bottle. Signal every single pothole. Maintain as much as you can direct control of your handlebars. None of this hero stuff going into your back pockets, fiddling around, standing up, undoing vests and stuff. Hands on the bars. Do not compromise your ability to handle your bicycle because shit goes wrong fast, man. And if it does, you want to be in the position to be able to get out of the way, but you also don't want to be the guy that causes someone else to crash. So pay attention out there because no one likes a hero. No one likes some buffed that goes and causes a crash in the bunch because they think they've seen something on the Tour de France, all right? Just stay within your limits. Be smart. Don't do anything stupid. For the most part, you'll stay upright. Remember that the only thing you can control out there is you and you trust everyone else. All right, number five, and we're rounding off the list here with remember, please, this is supposed to be a good time. You're not racing the Tour de France. Let's face it, you are leaps and bounds away from that. So just remember that you're having fun. Most cyclists take themselves way too seriously. And this doesn't just go for cyclists. You go to the local over 35s football match and they all think they're bloody lean or messy even though their knees don't work anymore. So just remember that you chose to do this. You're not being paid. You've chosen to do this on a Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, whatever, whenever it is. This is your choice and you're there to have a good time. Get along with your fellow riders. Work as a group. Don't try and compromise each other, especially if you're in C grade. Just work harmoniously to try and get the best out of your bodies because honestly, that's what you're there for. Once you've done your first race, if you're feeling good, stuff what your coach says, get on the front and put yourself to the limit. You might not win, but let's face it, last race that I won, I got 40 bucks. It's not paying the rent. So just go out there and have a good time. You're there to test your limits. You're there to test your ability. You're there to test whether all those bloody hours that you're putting in on Zwift in the garage are actually paying dividends. So just go and cut sick but at the same time, if you come first, you come last, at the end of the day, shake everyone's hand, tell them they raced a great race, and then sit there and just have a look at some of the sick bikes that are there and have a chat with some like-minded people about how freaking awesome 
bicycles are. They are my five points. Now, you might disagree with it, and honestly, I don't care. You may agree with them, in which case, sick. Either way, tell me in the comments that I'm either wrong or that I'm right. If you're not subscribed, which a huge chunk of you are, why not? This has been, you know, it's been a good time. And please, if you're in the Sydney area and you're thinking about doing a local bike race, hit me up. I'll either go and help you or I'll try and put you in touch with some people that do. I have some connections in the Sydney cycling community. It's not like I'm some great, amazing cyclist, but I do know people that race in most races and I'll put you in touch with the people that you need to know to get you out there smashing it in a local crit. Have fun, guys, and please stay upright.